time for another Ask Iris question. Now, one question I've gotten quite a few times and I got recently was, what type of applications would you recommend uh, developers do? Like if you're learning C Sharp, for example, what sort of applications should you do to learn the language? I think that question is a little bit tricky because there aren't no specific applications you can do to become a good developer. What I can do is I can share what sorts of applications I've done, uh, which I found quite helpful. And if you, choose to choose, if you choose to copy that or not, well, that's up to you. The first application I did was just a basic hello world. Now, the reason why I did that, I just needed to gain some confidence that I could actually make something work. And that was actually my big aha moment when I kind of realized that if I can make that little bit work, well, then I pretty much can make anything work. And it's quite embarrassing, but I actually have that blog post on my blog. If you have a look at the, under the, um, my first year as a programmer, I think it's uh, there's a link there to my very first blog post where I'm so excited about doing a hello world. It's kind of embarrassing now though, but yeah, that was my first application. Now, the second application I did, which wasn't really an application, was more of a project, was when I started school. So when I started school, the first thing we did is we learned how to pseudocode. I think that term exists in English as well, I'm not 100% sure, but pseudocode is basically when you write, when you just use ordinary words and you just write what's going to happen in the application. And we wrote, um, was supposed to be like, when I wake up, if time is more than nine, uh, then I run. And so you basically just write out the storyline. And it was a nice way to learn how to control uh, the flow of an application. After we did that, we had to implement that in a console application. And it was really fun comparing, uh, comparing the language afterwards, you know, using ordinary language and then actually using C Sharp. The next step, uh, the next application we did after that was, let me see, let me think about it. Yes, yes, no, no. We had to make a zoo. Our teacher told us, well, you have a console application and you have to make a zoo. I was like, okay, now how do you make a zoo in a console application? I mean, I, yeah, we kind of thought our teacher was a little bit crazy. And now in retrospect, he, he was, he is. Uh, sorry, Michael, but yeah, you know, it's true. So we had to make a zoo application. Now, he didn't give us any more instructions than that. He would said that and left the room and it was up to us to figure it out on our own. So my zoo ended up being basically you had to do a lot of input. You had to select which area of the zoo you want to go to. Then it will look at what time of the day it was. And depending on the time of the day, you would see different types of animals. Sometimes there would be a show. Sometimes there wouldn't be a show. And I used inheritance and interfaces quite extensively, actually, I remember. Which is kind of funny because I didn't really, really understand what they were doing at the time. And also add a bank and you could create a new bank account and withdraw money and then you could pay to have your pictures taken with animals and so on. What was really fun with that console application is, as with any console application, you get to focus on the logic instead of focusing on the interface. Because sometimes, you know, even if you say you're not much of a front-end developer, you still kind of get caught up in the colors and the margins and kind of realizing your dream, how the application should look like. So I really enjoyed that one. The next application we had to do afterwards was a, a Windows form application. Now the reason we did Windows form because was basically the aim with the whole school was that you're going to become a .NET developer. In Sweden, most people work as consultants, so most likely you're not going to be able to choose your project. So you need to know different types of applications, not the ones, not just the ones that are you know hip and modern and considered better practice right now. So we did a Windows Forms application, and we had to do a CRM. Um, uh, CRM was it a CRM we did? Yes, Customer Relationship Man Management Program. I think it stands for. So we did Cisco CRM. Uh, my group called it based on the names of the people in the group. And you had an application where you basically could register all the customers, and you could register any contact you had with them, like a conversation. We also had to make our own calendar, and we weren't allowed to use any external frameworks. And we only had ten days. 
and creating a calendar is a little bit of a challenge and it was really fun. So you could book set times, book times, and you couldn't, you know, make an appointment, two appointments at the exact same time. There was a lot of exception handling, a lot of that. And you had to, all the information was just serialized down to a file. So we got to work on, on that and that type of logic and do, you know, the basic updates, create and delete and so on. But mostly we focused on the calendar bit. And we also focus on working with images because you have to show images. And we also focus on uh, serializing. The next application afterwards was, uh, let's see, was, um, was a social mashup tool. So we had to do a social mashup tool. For this tool, it had to be MVVM, but we were not allowed to use any external frameworks. And we also divided the group. So we had to work with the senior developers that was the year... Uh, ahead of us so we had to learn to work with people that had more experience than us at the same time we were supposed to contribute the same amount of time energy and code which was a challenge for many and I was lucky I ended up with two pretty awesome developers uh, uh, Daniel Wiedegren and Jura Salmquist uh, one of them unfortunately ended up as a SharePoint developer but they're two really good friends of mine now so we had a good time it was very interesting so we had to gather data from Facebook Twitter your email and also Flickr and other social sites you had to be able to log in you had to store the passwords in a secure way which also was very interesting and you could have several accounts the application should work offline and so on this was a WPF application and the only APIs we were allowed to use were the ones that we needed you know for example for Twitter and Flickr and so on so what we learned there is we had an agile approach so we learned how to cooperate with people that we didn't know and people uh, with different knowledge and we also learned how to use the design pattern MVVM uh, which was a very big challenge. We had to do everything manually, so it was all manual work. The next project afterwards was an image editing uh, program, and that's probably the one I'm the most proud of, because we were basically given almost less than a week to create an application uh, that would be strict MVVM. Uh, it should get. Uh, you could do search on. You could search for images from Flickr inside the application. You can open up an image, edit it, and upload it to one of your several accounts. And the password had to be uh, stored securely. Then you could edit the image. As you, you should be able to go back in history and forward. You should be able to apply filters and uh, remove red eyes crop the image, add the text, and so on. Here's a big challenge. We weren't allowed to use any image editing libraries um, outside the, the GDI, I think it's called. So it was a big challenge. I mean, how do you remove red eyes? And how do you handle images? Now, if you know WPF, you know it's a little bit tricky with images per se and also working with the canvas. And we learned a lot about images and also what happens to the quality of images when you mess around with them and you convert uh, between the different formats, PNG, JPEGs, and so on. So we learned a lot. We spent a lot of time trying to preserve the quality of the image as best as we could. And removing red eyes, which was the, one of the bits I did, was also a big challenge. And what you basically realize is that an image is pixels. You've always heard it before, but it was the first time I really thought about pixels as in an array, that you can walk through the pixels, and then you look at the color at each pixel, and then you find it, and that's the bit you'll edit. And that was really cool when you suddenly realize, like, wow, everything is really an object. You can, you can kind of just pick apart everything and you'll have tiny bits and pieces and you can do whatever you want with them. I really love that. Another part was with a strict MVVM pattern, we did a heavy use of user controls. At the time, I wasn't a big fan of them because I didn't quite understand what I was and I was kind of giving my my colleagues a little bit of hard time because we had so many user controls but we learned using user controls and also creating our own custom controls and we got to work on that we had more use of styles and used more resources and we were still not really allowed to use any libraries although we did sneak in MVVM Lite and use the messaging there for some bits of our application 
we were actually the only group that remembered to test our application that would actually work offline. And I'm really proud of the fact that when we planned it, we made, we made sure we allowed for two days just for testing and deployment. The app had to be deployed and uh, packaged with an installation wizard as well, allowing like shortcuts to the desktop and so on. So that was a really good project. The next project we had afterwards, after learning so much about images, was we had to, we could basically, uh, oh, this, the f next one was, we had to create Facebook. So we had to make a Facebook application, replicate everything Facebook has. You can upload files, any files, and you can share files. You can add friends, remove friends accept friend requests, uh, deny friend requests, you can create groups, there are forums, you can have chat with one or several people, and what more? Uh, yeah, you upload pictures, you can have a look at pictures, you can choose who gets to see your pictures and who doesn't get to see them. Now this was an MVC4 application with Entity Framework for, for, for point or something. I don't know. It was one of the, at the time was the, the latest version of Entity Framework. They had just added support for um oh, what was it? oh I can't think of it right now. Anyways, and it has to be and it was SQL Server and everything and it had to be deployed. So that was really interesting. And what was even more interesting, we had to do this on our own. So basically it was just you. You couldn't hide. You couldn't hide front end, you couldn't hide back end. You couldn't let somebody else do the work for you and just, you know, just relax in the background. And that was a big challenge because you had to plan everything yourself, implement everything yourself. And that was my favorite favorite project because I learned so much. I tend to shy away from front end, but I couldn't do that this time. And you learn to love things you didn't think you could love, such as SQL Server. I actually don't mind it anymore. And I, I had a lot of good time. And uh, I used uh, Twitter Bootstrapper. Um, I did uh, actually a single page application because I wanted to challenge myself a little bit and so on. The next project we did afterwards, after that one, is we could choose ourselves what we wanted to make in pairs this time, pair programming. Now this time I was together with uh, Pea, Per Andersche, which is, uh, he's also a SharePoint developer, I don't know what's happening to my classmates. But anyway, we decided that both of us, we do a lot of C-sharp and we want to try something that we haven't used before. So we made a list of all the crazy cool things out there right now that we haven't had time to play with. And we decided to use them. So we used Node, so we had JavaScript, front and back end, and we used CoffeeScript, not a big fan of it and we used jade and stylus and we used what more we used so many frameworks kendo we used kendo ui of course working for telerik that made perfect sense and we used knockout and uh, now kendo does has its own mvvm implementation but we used knockout because uh, we already knew it so well and want to see how it worked together we used kendo knockout to kind of fix the differences between the two frameworks and so much more. And then, yeah, we used CouchDB. That was that. Now, if you haven't tried that, you definitely should. That is so different. It's kind of like a document database on some sort of drug. I don't know. Uh, it's kind of uh, psychedelic. It was really fun, though. It was really easy to get uh, set up. And we only had a few days. And both me and Pea were working full time. So it was a big challenge, but we made it work. And we made a booking application were basically uh, not a booking application, a time management application where you register the work you've done and then you can invite people, token-based invitations, they can see your times and so on. So I think I'm up to soon 15 minutes and that's going to be my max for a YouTube video. But those are some of the projects I've done in school. Now I've done a lot of hobby projects, in particular like mobile uh, applications because they're so easy to put together and you get to see something finished and being used. But those are just some applications I've done and hopefully they'll give you some guidance and some ideas. And I'm very curious to hear what you've tried and what you think would be a good idea. But I would say this is a pretty good starting point and I had a lot of fun. And there's the end of this because I got 15 seconds left. 10, 9... Oh, I'm going to end this. Thank you for listening and talk to you soon. Bye.